Hi. Um, okay, so here's the brain, and um, right off the bat, you can see that the brain has two hemispheres. So this long um, groove that separates the two hemispheres, the right and left hemisphere, is called the longitudinal fissure. Um, and the bumps of the brain that you can see on the top are called gyrus, or gyri, and then the, the grooves that are sort of not as deep as the fissure, these are called a sulcus, or sulci, for plural. The um, grooves you want to know on the brain are the longitudinal fissure. You also want to know this sulcus, which is called the central sulcus, that goes all the way across the two hemispheres. In front of the central sulcus is the frontal lobe. Behind the central sulcus is the parietal lobe. Um, there is another groove here called the lateral sulcus. And this is going to separate the temporal lobe from your frontal and parietal lobes. Okay. Um, the occipital lobe is going to be found in the back here. And there is an anatomical bear, uh, groove, but you guys don't need to know it. So the occipital lobe is the posterior lobe. And um, these brains also have a fifth lobe, which is called the insula. So to see the insula, you would have to lift up this piece of the brain, and you can see this lobe underneath, so this is called the insula. Okay, so you should know also, oops, brain's falling apart now. Yeah, that's right, okay. So another, a few gyri you need to know. So find your central sulcus, and the gyrus, or the bump in front of the central sulcus, is called the pre-central gyrus, or the motor cortex. So this is where your um, motor neurons will fire and all movement originates here, voluntary movement. Behind the central sulcus, we have the post-central gyrus, and this is your primary somatosensory gyrus. So this is where all of your sensations come into the brain and synapse. So all of your feelings from the skin, muscles, and bones come in synapse here. Okay. Um, the frontal lobe, the upper six layers of the cerebrum that you can see here is called the cerebral cortex, and it's all gray matter. Um, so everything you can see on the top would be your cerebral cortex. Okay. So if we were to open the brain, take a look at just one hemisphere, um, what you can see is a very large corpus callosum. This is a commissural fiber, meaning that it connects the two hemispheres of the brain. It's white matter. And there are two smaller commissural fibers. So if we follow the corpus callosum forward, we have number nine here. This is an anterior commissure. And number 13 right there, that is a posterior commissure. Um, so this, these areas connect the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, underneath the corpus callosum, we have a little dent here. This is a space. So here is our lateral ventricle. Um, this piece of um, fiber here, this is your fornix. This is actually part of your limbic system. And here is our choroid plexus. This is an area that creates cerebral spinal fluid. Um, and the fluid is began in, in your bloodstream, um, and the fluid is modified by your ependymal cells, and so that happens at this choroid plexus, which, so you create cerebral spinal fluid there. Underneath, we have this egg-shaped area. We're getting into the diencephalon now, so the largest part of the diencephalon is the thalamus. If you find this dot here, this is the interthalamic adhesion, or you can just call it intermediate mass. It ties the two lobes of the thalamus together. Um, so this thalamus area has a lot of important jobs. It's primarily a relay station for all your sensory information coming in, except for smell. So smell doesn't synapse here, but all other sensory information does. It also has a role in memory and um, memory storage and retrieval. Now if we move down below here, this area Below the thalamus is your hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is really important to regulate your autonomic nervous system. It creates hormones. It, it controls the hormones secreted from the pituitary gland here. 
um, the pituitary gland is going to be connected to the hypothalamus via this infundibulum. So that's what this is called. All right, so now in front in this area of the hypothalamus, we have the optic chiasm, which is where the optic nerve comes in and forms a cross. So this is part of the optic nerve. And then in the back, we have a bump here, and this is a mammillary body. And a lot of our feeding reflexes, licking and swallowing reflexes, um, are housed here. Okay, so all the, oh, and then here is our pineal gland. This gland is secretes uh, melatonin, so which is a hormone that controls our sleep and wake cycles. Okay, so we've talked about all the parts of the diencephalon, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, um, the pineal gland, the mammillary body, the infundibulum, which holds the pituitary, and our optic chiasm are all found in this area called the diencephalon. As we move down, we get to the mesencephalon, or the midbrain. The mesencephalon is divided by this groove. This is our cerebral aqueduct. So this is where our cerebral spinal fluid drains away from our third ventricle. Oh, should I have mentioned that? So this is our third ventricle will be found here. So the cerebral spinal, spinal fluid will flow down, and then this area where it widens, this is the fourth ventricle, and then it finally just leaves and it goes down into the central canal of the spinal cord. Here is, so we're back to the midbrain. The two bumps we see here, um, if we had two hemispheres together, we would make four bumps. So all four bumps together are called the corpora quadrigemina. If we look at just one bump, the superior colliculus, we actually have two. But the superior colliculus here is going to house our visual reflexes. The inferior colliculus is going to house our auditory reflexes. And then all this area in front, this is called our cerebral peduncles. So they're going to contain fibers that basically um, connect the, the telencephalon with the, the brainstem. Okay, so fibers will run in this direction. As we move down from this stick down here, we have the mes, I'm sorry, met encephalon, which includes the pons and the cerebellum. The cerebellum is uh, a ribbed, kind of a ribbed organ or part of the brain. It has these bumps, and these are called folia. And then when you look at the inside of the cerebellum, you'll find sort of a um, branches, and these are called arbor vitae. So an arbor referring to trees. So we have tree-like branches in this area. The pons is going to connect basically the rest of the brain stem in with the cerebellum, since the cerebellum lies off to the side. The cerebellum is responsible for um, smoothing your voluntary movements, learning movements, such as riding a bicycle or piano. Um, so those are some functions of those guys. So the pons is really just connecting fibers to, from the cerebellum into the brain stem, because pons literally, literally means bridge. Okay. As we come down here, the most inferior part of the brain stem is called the myelencephalon or the medulla oblongata. So um, the medulla is actually best seen if we had two hemispheres together. Okay. So here we can see from this aspect, we can see the pons, which is really big and a big bump. Under the pons, we have the medulla oblongata. And so the medulla is going to have a lot of reflexes, our um, cardioregulatory center, your reflexes for breathing and heartbeat, um, all your basic, basic life-sustaining reflexes are housed in the medulla oblongata. And then you have little bumps along the side of the medulla, so you can see here. This is called an olive, and you should have another olive on the other side. And uh, they are going to be relay centers for um, something called proprioception. So that's knowing that um, your limbs will give, your tendons and ligaments will have a stretch receptors and it'll tell you where your limbs are in space. So this is where they, they um, come in, these little olives. Okay? The medulla oblongata also have these straightaways down the front, and these are called the pyramids of the medulla oblongata. Okay? So um, those are all the major structures that you can see from this mid-sagittal section, so um, that concludes this video.